Hey guys, Stephen from LOJ here. This is a last video in a, a series we've done with John from PSI here on the differences between the Gen 3 and Gen 4 small block engines as well as the differences in the engine management that supports those engines. And when I say engine management, I mean factory PCMs, not aftermarket standalone. So um, now we're gonna talk Gen 4 motors, which Gen 4 motors, as we talked in the physical characteristics video, um, Pretty much 2007 up anything is going to be a Gen 4 motor, well, 2007 and a half in the pickup trucks. Um, and they have 58X reluctor wheels on the crank, 4X reluctors on the cam sensor. They're all drive-by wire. Uh, there was never a drive-by cable version of a, of a Gen 4 uh, vehicle produced. And um, we can just start right now. Let's talk a little bit about the drive-by wire setup in those cars. Sure. So the Gen 4 engines, as you said, um, started mid-2007 and worked their way up uh, to 2013. Uh, they were either E67 controllers or the E38 controller. Uh, the E38 is primarily, as I've said in one of your previous videos, that's what we use for pretty much all our Gen 4 wiring harnesses, with the exception of the LS9 and the LSA, which we use the E67. Um, the, the thing to note about the Gen 4 E38 uh, is that it will not support drive-by cable. So if you have one of these 58X engines, you're going to want to, and you want to run drive-by cable, uh, which we have plenty of people that want to do that, uh, you're going to have to use a converter box to convert the crank signal to, from 58X to 24X. Uh, Lingenfelter makes that box. Uh, we sell it. We're a reseller for Lingenfelter. And basically, it's an interface box that will connect to your front-mounted uh, cam sensor on the timing cover and your 58X crank sensor, uh, the box conditions, conditions those signals and then our harness plugs into that box. Yep. Now we actually use one of those boxes in our shop car. It's got a L92 Gen 4 motor, essentially the truck LS3, but we're running speed density on a Gen 3 PCM using a Lincoln filter box yeah. using one of PSI's harnesses. So. Yeah, and there's always reasons people want to do it and you know there's, there's reasons to run drive-by wire or run drive-by cable. Yep. Um, but that's a solution for you. Now, the standard drive-by-wire, uh, unlike the Gen 3 drive-by-wire, there is no TAC module, no throttle actuator control module. Uh, everything, all the TAC functions are taken care of in the, in the um, ECM, and they are output directly to the pedal. Uh, you can use a truck pedal. You can use a G8 pedal some people like to use. Um, but the most popular is the Corvette uh, six-pin pedal. It's a steel pedal. We sell it. Um, it's easy. It, it configures very nicely in most... Um, muscle cars. Yep. Um, you can reconfigure it if you want because it is steel so you can modify it or fabricate to change it. Um, but overall it's, it's a very straightforward setup. Now the other thing about Gen 4 engines and their drive-by-wire setup in the E38 controller is it's what we call an ECM, an, an engine control module, okay. as opposed to a PCM or powertrain control module which is what we call the Gen 3 controllers. And the reason we do this is because GM decided when they went to the 58X motors to take the trans controls out of the powertrain control module and split them into a trans control module and an engine control module. So now if you run an automatic transmission, specifically a 4L60E, 4L80E, you know, 4L65, 4L70, any of those variants, 4L80, 4L85E, um, or the six-speed automatic, 6L80E, 6L90E, all of those are going to have their own separate trans control module. The key thing to understand with Gen 4s when it comes to electronics is the operating system on the engine control module must match the operating system operating system on the trans control module. So you can't take an ECM that came out of a Gen 4 vehicle that had a 4L80 trans and then put a 6L80 behind it because that 4L80 ECM um, won't be able to talk to the 6L80s TCM. Yes, you have to, you have to match them. Okay. Um, what we do is, you know, we, we sell a lot of controllers, so we have suppliers that provide us with controllers in certain configurations based on what our customers need, and that's what we stock. So, for instance, um, a 4L60E or 4L80E, um, they are going to have a T42 controller, which is basically a small little e uh, TCM with a single connector on it. And the harness is going to plug into that, and then it's going to plug into the E38. And then they're configured, from a wiring standpoint, the CAN bus system, which is the information system to let those controllers talk to each other, is configured in a, in a certain way. 
If you had a six-speed automatic, 6L80E, 6L90E, that runs a T43 controller. That, that controller is actually in the transmission. That is right? correct. It is in the transmission. So that harness looks completely different from a four-speed automatic controller. Now, which transmission you use is really personal preference. I mean, it, and it depends on the application. If you're trying to make a, a ton of horsepower, maybe the 4L80E is what you want to use. If you're trying to make a nice little driver and you're on a, more of a budget, maybe the 4L60E is what you want to use. If you like the idea of the way the six-speed shifts, some people do, some people don't, you run the six-speed automatic. Right. But we could configure your harness and your computer and everything else that you need however you want to do it. If you had an engine that came with a 4L6E but you want to throw a six-speed automatic behind it, we can provide you with that. But the key to understand is that the transmission is typically what's going to drive what harness you buy from us and what operating systems we put on the actual ECM and TCM. Correct. Okay. Now, a key point that John touched on that I think um, I touched on a little bit in the Gen 3 video was the fact that Gen 4 PCMs, or Gen 4 ECMs, ECMs I'm sorry, yep. can talk directly to the pedal and to the throttle body without any other modules in between them. And that makes the install in older vehicles like this Camaro behind me or a 300ZX a little bit easier from a packaging perspective because, first of all, the ECMs on Gen 4 motors are smaller physically than the PCMs on Gen 3 motors, so they're easier to tuck away up under a dashboard or, or whatnot. And because you don't have a tap module to mount anywhere, that makes things simpler too. So from you know a swap perspective, when we do 240SXs or 300ZXs with Gen 4 motors, like Project 427Z has got an LS7 in it, um, we just have to fabricate a bracket for mounting that uh, drive-by-wire pedal to the uh, firewall. Uh, and it's just something you have to take into consideration when you're selecting what motor or trans you want to run in one of these swaps. So Yeah, and, and one of the other keys is that, um, again, as I said in the Gen 3 video, whatever your configuration, whether it's um, an LS3 intake, depending on the throttle body you're using, whether it's a truck versus an LS7 or an LS2, um, the MAP sensor you're using, the mass airflow sensor you're using, all of these things factor into the tune. Yep. And you need to make sure that... Um, when you when you put all this stuff together, don't just try to find stuff that like you know maybe a friend gave you or or this thing was cheap or that thing was cheap. Make sure you get stuff that works together. And if you don't know what works together, give us a call. You can call us. You can call LOJ, and right. and we'll tell you what's going to work together. And then that way we make sure that in the tune, everything's configured to work together. Or if you want to save a phone call too, you can go right on PSI's website yeah. and download the instructions. And in the instructions, it lists what part number sensors yeah. work with what harnesses. So, you know, um, but either way, it's not like we don't like the phone calls, but, you know, a lot of guys are doing the do-it-yourselfers too. They just want to figure it out on their own. So the information's available. It's out there. And um, like John said, it's very important to make sure all of the sensors, math, map, the injector size, everything is known before you order your harness and computer so it's set up to function properly as soon as you install it and you're not banging your head against the wall trying to do troubleshooting. So. Yeah, and another interesting point um, briefly is that with the Gen 4 engines, when it comes to the transmission, um, on a Gen 3 engine, we get customers that say are going to run a Turbo 350 trans, but they feel that later on down the line they'll have enough money to go buy 4L60E or 4L80E. We can sell them a 4L60E or 4L80E harness at that time. They do not have to hook up the trans connector, and the engine and everything will work correctly. Right. On a Gen 4 engine, that is not the case because of the way the CAN bus system is wired. Sure. So just keep in mind that you really do need to define that requirement of what transmission you're going to run um, before you go ahead and buy a harness. So if you're going to run a 6-speed automatic, make sure you have the 6-speed automatic and that's what you're going to run. Don't say, well, I want to run a Turbo 350 now and then I'm going to change later on because you're going to be buying a new harness at that point. Yeah. You're not going to update the harness after the fact. No, no, absolutely. So another, I guess, point to talk a little bit about with Gen 4 motors that um, wasn't even an issue with Gen 3 or something to think about was displacement on demand or active fuel management. You'll see acronyms of DOD slash AFM. That's what they're referring to. That's cylinder deactivation. It was a, a fuel economy measure that GM took in their Gen 4 motors to improve their corporate average fuel economy standards. And... Um, the other thing that started making its debut on Gen 4 motors was VBT, or variable valve timing. So, um, John sells harnesses that will work with both. 
Uh, well, not, not with not, not with, with DOD, but with VVT. Yes. Okay. And and uh, so let's say you have variable valve timing again. They, you know, some people get rid of it, some people keep it. Yep. Um, it was available on certain truck engines, and eventually became available on all truck engines. Yep. Uh, DOD is a different animal. DOD, uh, we do not supply harnesses with DOD, and the simple reason is is because we feel DOD, a um, a lot of people get rid of it, uh, justifiably so, because the lifters are known to fail. Uh, I have a, a Pontiac G8, as you know, and we, luckily within warranty, um, the lifters started knocking and they wiped the cam out and then they replaced the cam. Unfortunately, they had to put the DOD back in because it was a warranty job, but the lifters are known to fail. Um, your fuel economy increase really isn't as good as, as some people would make you think. Yeah. Um, and lastly, in a swap, uh, DOD, while you can hook it up and the DOD will turn on and off, um, really, there are other things that you need inside the computer turned on in order to make the DOD work correctly. Specifically, you should have all your O2s on, you should have your catalytic converters on, um, and a host of other emissions um, equipment in order for the DOD to work correctly. And the reason being is that if your GM, again, I've said it before, the vehicle, the, the engine still thinks it's in the stock vehicle. If you're GM and you don't want to do catalytic converter warranties, you make sure that your primary and secondary O2s are reading correctly. If the DOD is on and those stop reading correctly, it's going to turn the DOD off and you're not going to feel it. Yeah. I mean, you might slightly feel, but with a good exhaust system, you're not going to feel the DOD go on and off. And the DOD won't even be working. Even though you have the plug hooked up and you think the DOD is working, it's not working. Yeah. So again, we just feel from a PSI uh, standpoint that the uh, the benefits of running DOD really aren't there compared to the risks of, you know, lunching a cam or, you know, having um, um, in, uh, uh, lifter failure, things of that nature, plus a whole host of wiring that most people with a hot rod or, or a no, muscle car, don't they don't want to deal with it. Yeah. So that's why, you know, you can have the DOD still installed. We just turn it off in the computer and we don't provide the wiring for it. Um, then from VVT though, you do support VVT Yes. and VVT, I guess is from the two VVT slash DOD, VVT has been more openly accepted in the aftermarket, um, because there are genuine benefits to power production with VVT. It's not just a fuel economy thing. So. Yeah. There are VVT cams out there. I mean, you yeah. could go to Texas speed or, or anybody for that matter, and they will supply you with a VVT cam, which is, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, DOD again. Nobody's, nobody's really building DOD cams that I know of because once you start getting up in that RPM range, that's when you start, you know, launching, yeah. launching uh, lifters. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, I guess we covered a lot of the, the main points we wanted to talk about with Gen 4 motors. Um, we don't really talk about mass air sensors, but, um, again, there's the LS3 math. If you want to hear about the blade style and the issues that can be associated with that, I'd go listen to the Gen 3 video or watch the Gen 3 video we put out. Um, there's the truck. LS or uh, Chuck Gen 4 mass air sensors. Yeah, there's, are, multi there's actually sensors. multiples of yeah. those as well. And again, sometimes, uh, as I've said in the other video, you know, things might plug in together, um, but they might not be compatible. So again, make sure the tune matches for whatever mass air you're running, whatever throttle body you're running. Also, keep in mind that, um, you know, we tailor our harnesses to, what, to the math that you're running when you order. You tell us what math you're running. You can't just go say, hey, you know what, I'm going to change the math. Because you you could plug our connector in to the wrong math. Next thing you know, you smoke the mass airflow sensor because the, the power on the ground are flipped. Yep. So keep in mind that whatever you tell us is what we're going to build it for. If down the road you do change it, or if we're just a phone call away and we'll tell you how to repin it, we'll provide you with the connector that you need to, to get that particular sensor working. Absolutely. And if there is going to be a tune change, we'll let you know there's a tune change. And, you know, so a nice thing about buying computers through us is you have a, um, you know, you have a lifetime warranty on retunes for the computer. We will update it for free. Just pay the shipping. Okay. That's awesome. Good to know. And that applies for us as well since PSI is our PCM supplier. Yeah. So, all right. Well, guys, um, I think that just about covers everything we wanted to talk about with Gen 4 uh, electronics. Um, maybe someday in the future you'll see a Gen 5 video, uh, not anytime soon I don't think because we're still in the early adoptions phases for those motors, but um, we appreciate your time watching this and if you have any questions at all feel free to contact us at LOJ, contact the guys at P
PSI and they'd be happy to help you out in any way they can. All right, thanks.